murder of a young 14-year-old young black man by the name of Emmett Till in August of 1955 created such an uproar in the black community, causing anger and hate to spread throughout. The community was outraged due to the societal constraints and racism they, they had to endure. This event caused a negative stimulation in the community, causing a buildup of anger within that would only add up to the start of the civil rights movement just months later. The story of Emmett Till follows. Emmett was in Money, Mississippi when he was falsely accused of sexually arresting a white female cashier at the local corner store. Emmett and his friends decided to go to the store to buy a few snacks and such. And Emmett made a bet with his friends that he would flirt with the white cashier. This was unheard of due to the heavy segregation at the time. It is believed by many that Emmett had simply flirted with her by whistling when the young teens had left the store. Though it was reported by the white cashier that he had made sexual advances towards her, and because of that report, the consequences were devastating. Emmett Till was known to be quite a jokester of his time. He received the nickname Bobo because he was known for clowning around. Emmett had grown up in the middle class neighborhood of the southern part of Chicago. Emmett was known to be a light hearted, funny, and responsible young man. He had attended McCosh Grammar School, a segregated school where he had acquired many friends. Even though he's a chubby young man, that didn't seem to hinder his ability to make friends. Emmett's mom was as well known to be a very responsible, hardworking, and smart young woman with outstanding achievements. Emmett's mother worked very hard to provide for her and her son. They were a family of two due to her husband leaving her while Emmett was unborn. She excelled both academically and as well as professionally. She had achieved the honor roll at her school. She was only the fourth black woman to graduate and the first to achieve honor roll from her school. Emmett's mom was a very hard young working mother that only wanted the best for her child. Approximately four days after the store incident, the cashier's husband, Roy, and his half-brother, J.W., had kidnapped Emmett from his house at 2.30 in the morning. They had beaten him senseless with injuries that are so brutal that his face was unrecognizable by the end of it. They had beat Emmett very harshly and brutally, then proceeded to shoot him in the head and then tied him to a large metal fan, then put his body in the water. Days later, Moses Wright, one of his relatives he was staying with, had reported the disappearance, and the cops, of course, found him in the Tallahatchie River, beaten senseless to the point of complete destruction of the facial features. The only way that he was able to be recognized was the ring on his finger that had the initials of his father engraved onto them. Emmett's mother had decided it would be best for Emmett to have an open casket funeral with a five-day display of the body. His mother had made this decision just to show how brutal the condition of his body was. She went to everyone, which included thousands of people from society who had shown up, just to see the evidence of this hate-motivated crime. It was her decision to let everyone be aware of this crime to bring awareness to the type of discrimination the black race was receiving. After a short while, it was time for this court case of this obvious hate crime. Evidence was perfectly pointing to whom had committed the crime, and it seemed as if there was no way that defendants could not be sent to jail. Though, the jury for this case had decided in the defendant's favor, therefore freeing them of any charges. The only reason for this hiccup was because the whole entire jury for this case were all white men that voted in the favor of their race, not taking into account the actual evidence that just spelled out who murdered Emmett. Later, in a money bribe, the two men who killed Emmett, J.W. and Roy, took a deal to tell the story of how they killed Emmett because they knew they were safe under the law's double jeopardy stated in the Constitution. I'll now interview Mr. Odo, a teacher on Niles West, in order to gather information on the topic of Emmett Till. How did Emmett Till impact the civil resistance movement? Uh, Emmett Till impacted the civil resistance movement because it brought awareness to the types of conduct like lynching that was going on during that time period and the type of racism that existed especially in areas of the Deep South um, during that time period. And what happened was is it kind of put a face to uh, individuals that were lynched and individuals that kind of had justice, uh, supposed justice to them outside the legal system. And it showed to people that there were crimes being committed and atrocities being committed towards people of color in a time period that uh, people were not willing to talk about it or bring it to the forefront or attention. And the Emmett Till incident, I believe, in my opinion, kind of led to uh, people at that time period to look upon themselves and reflect and, as a society and be like, what are we doing wrong? Why are, we, uh, why are instances like this happening in America? Does Emmett have an impact today in today's society? And if so, how? Yes, definitely. I think that it's important for U.S. history classes to teach 
Emmett Till, and I also think it's important for social justice classes, English classes, um, uh, for all students to have a knowledge that this was unfortunately the conduct that people were uh, doing back in the day, and I think it's important to have that awareness. And also, uh, when you think about police brutality and when you think about uh, people of color right now and, and the social justice issues like Colin Kaepernick kneeling for the anthem and how that's spread to uh, other NFL players and the NBA and other sports, that uh, clearly there's social injustice that's happening right now, and Emmett Till kind of uh, reminds us that that injustice has been happening in the United States for a long period of time, and allows us to kind of try to not make those mistakes again. What do you think the principal cause uh, was of this incident? Uh, racism, otherization. I think that uh, throughout time, America has shown sort of, uh, especially white Americans, have shown a resistance towards people of other races and sort of xenophobia and afraid of the other. And I just think that people are scared of difference. And um, I think when people blend together, cultures blend together, uh, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. And I think America is sort of like a testing ground of different cultures coming together and um, unfortunately experiencing uh, racism and xenophobia due to the fact that uh, not everyone gets along. Do you believe the extent of racism that occurred during this time period is present to today's time? Uh, unfortunately, yes. I don't think that lynchings like that um, are going to occur as frequently. I think that with social media and just, I think, with society progressing, it's more inappropriate, and obviously there would be more justice to the perpetrators that end up doing crimes like that. However, I do think that racism exists, and I think that um, right now with... Uh, the current political climate, a lot of people are holding on to um, their identity way more, and a lot of, especially white men, feel very disenfranchised right now, and I think that brings about racism more. Do you think something like this can happen in today's society? Uh, unfortunately, yes. I think it's harder to happen, and I think justice would be brought to the people that committed the atrocity much swifter and quicker. I also think that um, in today's society, it would be condemned uh, much quicker. However, I think that, un you know, unfortunately right now we're at a very, we're at a precipice of our racial relations, and I think we've taken um, a lot of steps back uh, since the election of Donald Trump in terms of uh, where we're moving forward in terms of race relations. All right, thank you so much, Mr. Odo. You good? Yes.